Hey, welcome to Saturday. Today we are going to quickly discuss potassium. I know you, a lot of you have asked about why potassium relative to sodium is bad for hydration, and we're going to discuss that in this video. In short, your kidneys are going to do the job of taking what's in your blood and keeping it in balance. And if you have more potassium than you need, your kidneys are going to say, whoa, let's push some of that out into your urine. You're going to pee out potassium. But unfortunately, the kidneys are an imperfect machine, and they can't just produce urine that just has potassium in it. They also put sodium into that urine, even when they're trying to retain all of the sodium that you need in your bloodstream. So you need sodium in your bloodstream for hydration. Your kidneys are trying to get rid of extra potassium, and they're actually sending out sodium with that potassium, whether they like it or not. That's reducing the overall sodium content of your blood, and it's reducing your blood's ability to retain the water that you consume during your exercise. Now, what about like the sodium potassium pump and osmotic pressure and extracellular versus intracellular um, water. So reason number two that potassium in excess in your beverages causes dehydration in your bloodstream where you want it is because it pulls sodium into your tissues and out of your bloodstream. Again, reducing the sodium content of your blood means you're going to reduce the uh, blood's ability to hold water, which is where you want your water if you want high blood volume, high cardiac output, and high exercise performance. When a person sweats, we sweat out a lot of sodium and some potassium as, as well. Why would we not want to just consume sodium and potassium to replace what we've lost in our sweat? Hmm. That's actually a really good question framed that way. I think the answer really is, is that we are sweating out such a low amount of potassium that it doesn't really matter. Sodium is the big player in maintaining blood volume, and that's really what matters. I don't think we would ever get to a point where we sweat out enough, and it's it's hard to become hypokalemic through like even heavy sweating and heavy training. Let's say we have a person who sweats a moderate amount, but their sweat is not very salty. What would you say the ratio would be of sodium to potassium lost in that person's sweat. I would have guessed three to one to four to one, uh, but uh, since you just pulled out your thousand page textbook to fact check here. So potassium sweat loss milligrams per liter is generally for the average person about 150 megs of, of potassium per liter, but sodium can vary from 900 to 2600 milligrams uh, per liter of in sweat. Sounds like it's closer to four or five to one sodium to potassium in that sort of scenario. And in heavier sweat, it changes a lot. Yeah, heavier sweating or a person who just generally has salty sweat. Yeah, you might hit 10 to 1 sodium to potassium in your sweat or even 15 to 1 sodium to potassium in your sweat. When I was in high school, maybe even college, I'm not sure, I remember thinking that cramping was resolved with potassium. And I remember thinking if I eat bananas, I will be protected from cramping. What are your thoughts on that? Mostly hogwash. Um, <laughs> mostly wives tale. It's probably the carbohydrate in the banana that actually helped people more there. And then when people recommend mustard to get potassium, it's actually the oral reflex of the vinegar in the mouth that causes the cramps to go away. Uh, potassium does not help cramping. Sodium, on the other hand, does help cramping. The body is re really good at maintaining homeostasis, um, but it's really good to note that if you are over consuming potassium while you're exercising and you don't need to be consuming the potassium that you are, you can actually create um, cardiac arrhythmias with too much potassium. So if you're losing not very much potassium and you're consuming a lot of potassium, especially relative to sodium, yeah, you might feel some weird stuff with your heart. Not probably life-threatening in the amount that you're taking in with like sport supplements, but still just not ideal. And actually some sports supplements like Prime and Body oh, Armor yeah, do true. have super high potassium, uh, coconut water as well. So avoid those if you are exercising. Or our sparkling waters that we love so much. Yeah. Let us know how you found sodium and potassium affect you in training in the comments. Till next time.